how many people should be here? Uh, Will you take the register? Yeah, I'm going to take it. It's totally around, supposed to be like 26. Then just now we got 12. Yeah. All right, so one more minute, I'll begin on time, okay. Hare Krishna, welcome everyone. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandabhats. Hare Krishna Prabhus, Dandabhats, Pranams. So we would we'll like to begin. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsuran Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachate Shatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we welcome everyone to our second lesson on Unit 3 of the Bhakti Vaibhav. Shall we share the screen, Maharaj? Sorry? Shall we start that uh, PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, I was going to do it myself. Uh, so you want... I, I want to... Screen, screen share, the last one? No, when you are doing the screen share, uh -huh. actually if somebody is raising their hand, you can't see that. So if I am doing, then you can be able to see. So which one is uh, feasible for you? It is. If you want, you can do that. It's not a problem. Oh, okay. I should see the raising their hand. Eh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So can you go to this one? This okay. is, uh, that is on lesson nine, one. Lesson one, 15 slate, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're just going to continue from where we left off in the previous class. We didn't get a chance to get a feedback from the, from the audience in relation to this question of protection in ISKCON. Keep going, not that slight. This one, Maharaj? A 19 slate, right? Yeah. Well, let's begin anyway with this. In, in our previous class, we had discussed this topic about women as a class. Prabhupada has stated, no better than boys, therefore they have no discriminatory power like that of a man. Now, we did discuss a little bit about how this statement may be abused. One of the devotees brought up the point that it, this may uh, stop uh, 
uh, or restrict the, uh, the ability of women as managers or as administrators. Would the ladies like to offer any contribution in this matter? How do you feel about this? Maybe you could talk something about what, why would Prabhupada bring this up? What is Prabhupada's intention here? Anybody would like to suggest? Why did Prabhupada state like this? Tejasini, you're a Mariji. How do you feel about this? Oh, someone's raised their hand here. Morari, is it? Yes? Yes, yes. Marari. Okay, we'll hear from Morari. Uh, Prabhupada was mentioning because he was, it was related to uh, the abusing of uh, Mataji um, Deva, 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 yes, uh, Dropadi. Uh, the dra sorry, dra Draupadi, because she she was uh, very uh, affectionate toward Ashwatthama. So, and uh, on the other hand, uh, Krishna and uh, Bhima, they were they wanted to kill him. So Prabhupada mentioned uh, in this uh, connection. Okay. So, do you agree with it? Do you agree with that women are like that? That women are very, can be very soft-hearted and don't always show the proper discrimination? Uh, yes. Yes, it, it's like that, that the, in, a, in connection, as, as my understanding is also that the, like in the divine uh, couple, Radha and Krishna, so uh, Srimati Radha Rani is uh, more like merciful than uh, Krishna in this in this connection. So we are going to Krishna through his uh, through Radha Rani. Uh, All right. So she, so Srimati Radha Rani has, we would say, genuine discrimination. the The point is that discrimination should be genuine. It shouldn't just be that, oh, you know, we should be kind to people. What about Murli Manohar? You have your hand up. Would you like to comment, Prabhu? Thank you, Maharaj. I was thinking more in the lines that Prabhupada is um, showing us what um, a society is and how a society and how certain persons in that society should be protected. So as our ISKCON society develops, we should be aware of this. We should be acting to protect women, to protect old people, to protect Brahmanis. So Prabhupada's like indicating that's how we should act as a society. Okay, so your point is that women do need protection and they may be sometimes over kind unnecessarily. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. So it has to be looked at. It has to be seen, it has to, yeah, yeah right. I'm saying that, yeah, very oh. much. Yeah. Okay, thank you Prabhu. And uh, is it Rajasekhar Prabhu? You have your hand up? Rajasekhar Prabhu? Uh, I, uh, I want to, I want to say that uh, women have got a certain role, feminine role, feminine role, as uh, contrast to uh, uh, male. Men have got different kind of role and women have got different kind of role. Role are different. They have to raise the kids and all these things. So they have got different kind of role to play. Okay, so your point is that women, this is a women's role in the society. Women are some kind of different kind of role. Uh -huh. We didn't get a comment from a lady yet. Yeah, Rasarani Devdasi. Who? Rasarani Devdasi. Rasarani Maharaji? Krishna Maharaj. So I just like to give my opinion. 
on that point. Um, I agree with Shira Prabhupada and what the other devotees have said. Women by nature are emotional. Women by nature, sometimes we make less intelligent choices. However, I feel that men, materialistic men today, are not that intelligent themselves. So um, my opinion would be that when Shira Prabhupada is making that statement, I'm going to speculate to say that he said that in the event of devotee men, a men of a certain class, men of who have spiritual knowledge, not of materialistic men, because in today's day and age, in my working society as well, men do not uh, portray themselves in a form of intelligence in the, in the manner in which they are meant to protect women. That is not seen at all. And how do you, you. how do you feel about it in ISKCON? Um, well, in ISKCON in South Africa, I would have to say that, to be totally honest, women are given a fair opportunity to perform lots of services. Women are given an opportunity in South in ISKCON South Africa to perform services more or less equivalent e equivalent to men. I mean, obviously, there are certain services that uh, a masterji cannot do. Like a masterji cannot become an intimate service of a sannyasi. But other than that, within ISKCON South Africa, I cannot say that women are deprived of, of any opportunities, because we're not. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll just take one more comment. Let's see, is this a Mahavir, Mahavidya? Mahavir Rupa. Mahavir Rupa? Huh? Well, I'm not quite sure how I relate this, uh, you know, c c you're, you haven't given me any real judgment about the situation in relation to, you know, women in general and their discriminatory power. All right. Then sometimes Prabhupada would bring this point up that women devotees, uh, devotee ladies, are different from general women, the women in general, the devotee ladies. But Draupadi is certainly a devotee, and Prabhupada mentions she's a pure devotee. And how about in the case of Draupadi then? The yeah, Draupadi. Draupadi basically, uh, Draupadi, uh, didn't, he, he perceived uh, Ashwatthama as the uh, son of uh, Dronacharya and in fact she perceived him as Dronacharya himself. So she was not willing to give any punishment uh, to him. But Lord Krishna kind of uh, uh, intermediate, uh, he, he, mediated the situation by punishing him and not even taking his life. So kind of balance was wrong. Yes, right. It's, it was a, a special situation that he was to be punished and at the same time he was not to be punished. So there was no fault on the part of Draupadi that she wanted to... Uh, she wanted to treat him uh, with some respect, but at the same time, 
he was guilty of a very sinful activity and there had to be some punishment for that. So it was a, it was a delicate situation which had to be balanced. Well, we are taught to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. That is our prayer, the, the, the great chanting for deliverance, simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord. If we offer that prayer, then that will certainly please Lord Krishna. All right, can you go ahead to the next slide, Prabhu? Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Right, and then at the end of the class, we had put the devotees into groups and we had assigned a topic for each group. All right, there were, I think there were two groups to discuss the position of women and if they were given proper protection. And then there was a group to consider the position of the cows, the children, the old men and the brahmanas. So can we have a spokesman from group one? Somebody here from group one? Any hands are raised? All right, L let's take somebody from another group. Who would like to volunteer first of all to give their opinion about the protection given to? Okay, we have some volunteers. Janmashtami Prabhu, which topic you'd like to speak on, Prabhu? Janmashtami Prabhu? One second, something's not right on my... I can't get the video on. <laughs> <clears throat> Somehow uh, I don't see the bottom of the uh, screen. <clears throat> All right, so anyway, I'll just speak without the video. <clears throat> um, we, we were assigned to speak on old men. All right. I can speak from realization being an old man. <laughs> um, this is, um, I think that the, the assignment was we were supposed to... Uh, speak about how this reflects Śrīla Prabhupāda's mood and mission. Yes. It's relevant to Śrīla Prabhupāda's mood and mission. Well, um, he did say towards the end that 50% of my work is not completed. And he actually, um, he'd gone to London and then he was planning to um, travel to New York and then on to um, Gilinagri. Uh, this was in 1977. Uh, to establish Van Ashram. So the, that kind of the general um, coverage of, um, you know, these protecting these five um, personalities is, um, you know, that's all within Van Ashram. Now the last stage of life is kind of our last chance to get it together. <laughs> you know, to really... Um, focus on hearing and chanting and connecting in a relationship with Krishna. So it should be given a very, very high priority. And uh, in the Vedic system, of course, one at the Panchas, Pur, um, Panchas Vanam Pur, um, Puram Vajet. It, um, how do you say it? Panchasorvam Vanam Brajet. That's it. 
Panchas Purnam Vanambraja, that at the age of 50, one should go to the forest. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the idea is that we take, when one goes into the Vanaprast ashram, of course, that can be done conjointly with uh, one's wife, at least initially, and then, um, then sannyas. It hasn't, okay, so then, so that's an important aspect, so that one can become free from the entanglements of family life, and then focus on spiritual development. Um, now, the other second part of the question is how effective has this guy been, been at doing this, um, of giving up, of protecting old men and facilitating men of breast and um, sannyas. The sannyas, it's gone fairly well in recent years. I, I think that's a tribute to the Iskand sannyas ministry. It's, the sannyas ashram has become much more stable than it was um, in the 10, 15 years after Prabhupada left. Um, regarding Vanaprast, it's practically a non-existent ashram. And um, some of that is perhaps due to lack of prioritization um, by the leadership. I know that uh, Jananandan Swami, he, he put together a whole book on Vanaprast, presented it to the GBC, but they didn't do anything with it. I'm not saying this in a critical mood, but it's just kind of the stage of development our movement is in. Many years ago, there was a big section of land here in Mayapur that was allocated for um, elderly devotees, but nothing's happened with it. It just hasn't been prioritized. Um, I, you know, the, I have seen very few devotees actually take up Vanaprast in the movement. There's only a very few. There's some strong advocates like Jayadvaita Swami, Jadananda Swami. Um, but it's, um, it's a difficult road to cross or to traverse, primarily because it's not very much emphasized, not prioritized in our movement. And um, kind of the proof is in the pudding because there isn't facility easily available for devotees to go into a Vanaprast ashram setting um, where you know they've maybe worked hard all their lives within our movement and uh, then what what do they do <laughs> you know it's just not a, it's not a, an easy step so um, I would say that we've got a ways to go I think just in general in terms of a, of a society where there's loving respect for each other we've come a long ways time I've been in the movement since 77 but this is an area where uh, we need to increase because really it's such an important aspect that we're, we're in the movement to develop pure love for Krishna and Prabhupada wants us to become qualified to go back to Godhead so this last stage of life is a very significant aspect in that regard but I'd like to say, you know, he he did he does say that the Vrindavan and Mayapur, these temples are meant for this purpose that older people can come and retire there and pass their final years of their life in the Holy Dham. Yeah, so then it really needs to be prioritized. That land's been sitting there; nothing's been done. It's a question of uh, of funding, but it hasn't happened. Oh, now I can turn my video on. Somehow or other, it wasn't working before. So um, it just needs, it needs that, you know, some kind of a campaign to facilitate the session. And then also, you know, that there's a facility for ladies and men should be given so that they can move ahead. Okay, just, just stick with the old men. Let's leave it okay, with that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear, all right, we have uh, several hands raised. Uh, do, who would like to speak? Is, on, let's see, we've heard about the old man. Which topic would you like to speak on? Who have we got? I'm not able to Rasa see. Sejal. Who? Rasa 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 well, he just spoke. What about Vinay Damodar Das? Vinay Damodar Das. Which topic you're going to speak on, Prabhu? Uh, 
Maharaj on uh, children protection. Okay. Children. Yes. So, uh, so if if we see in the that purport, uh, Sri Papa say uh, uh, the purpose of protecting the children is uh, to prepare them for uh, liberty from material bondage. And second, very important point, uh, Sri Papa uh, raised with so his mood that this protection uh, should start uh, from the uh, begetting of the children, means Gardan Sanskar. So it start uh, the perfective process start from that stage itself so uh, uh, from uh, from that point of view if we see uh, in iscon uh, protecting the children um, uh, from uh, grahastha perspective we see so uh, many uh, uh, children programs are being developed in past uh, from uh, uh, the day iscon uh, here and the gurukula are there uh, and uh, uh, but this, uh, what I have uh, personally seen that this, uh, what Prabhupada said that uh, every grahastha uh, he should uh, do at least 50 uh, rounds uh, before uh, begetting the children to have this uh, Garbdan Sanskar that uh, we should take uh, seriously. And then second thing is that uh, uh, our Guru Kula system and as in Mayapur there is Kula. So those all things uh, can be extended so that the children can be actually understand the need of the uh, spiritual uh, progress. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, that, that were some points. Uh, and, uh, and in the group, uh, devotees uh, uh, told some points like uh, 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 they, are, they are the service, uh, means uh, facilities uh, which are given in various congregations. So from that, uh, they get association so that they can be protected from outside. And similarly, if Guru Kula system is also uh, extended uh, more, then uh, we can save them from the outside association. Yes, we, I think you're right. I agree with this, that we need to extend the Guru Kula system more. Not everyone can come to Mayapur. So yes. th there's certainly a great need for development of more gurukulas where we've developed a congregation the congregation have children and the children should get proper education in a gurukula should be proper environment for them to develop their spiritual life so thank you prabhu for that thank well, you, Maharaj, for and, and well who, okay marari prabhu topic Our group was uh, about cow protection. Yes. Uh, and uh, we were speaking that uh, we have in this town some gosharas, uh, uh, and uh, we have also some individual devotees which take care about the cows in some places. And uh, also we spoke about that. Uh, in places where there is no cows, the devotees have no cows and the abilities to, to protect the cows, they can uh, buy a milk and uh, offer the milk to benefit the cows in this way. And, uh, yes. it, it can be better, uh, but it, it is also an easy, easy job to, to protect the cows and have the system because when, when you want the milk, you must have uh, new cows. So, and uh, make the system the ability to uh, to not uh, uh, not kill them because we have no space then for them and like this. Okay. Are there any comment about ISKCON in general? How are we doing? We have in ISKCON in some places this Goshalas, so in, the, in this way, we, we take care about the, the cows, but not 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 the animals, just in some places. I know in our in our community we have here cows, and uh, uh, where is this? They, uh, Slovakia. Uh huh. We have like now six cows. We have twelve, but they doesn't uh, produce milk yet now and uh, one griasta kept taking care about them so but there, there is this uh, 
there is this difficulty about uh, uh, new, uh, like new new cows and uh, the place and uh, uh, for them and uh, people which will take care to the future. Okay, thank you. Oh, Karuna Thara Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I wish to comment on women. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. So, like in, uh, I mean, out in the age of Kali, every woman may not be seen with a proper eye. Matlab, they, and they're not given proper protection. Uh, like uh, in, the, in the young and the, in the uh, old age even. But whereas in Iskorn, they are referred to as Mataji and they treated... Um, they are given all the services and they are uh, they're treated as Mataji also. Everyone respects women here in Iskorn. Uh, that is not done outside. It may not be done outside. Mm. Thank you. You're, you're personally satisfied with the treatment of women in Iskorn? Yes, Prabhuji. Because everyone is treated as respect, with respect. They, are, they uh, have a uh, place there uh, in Iskorn. And they are uh, confident that people here they don't see them with, uh, I mean, with any other eye. I mean, they don't see them with any other eye, uh, which is not there in uh, outside, uh, outside this con. Oh, really? You find the treatment of women is much better in Iskon than outside of Iskon? Yes, because that is they are uh, treated with respect. Like they refer to as Mahaji mm. that way. Okay. Thank you very much. Very nice. You like to be called Mataji. You don't mind. Some women don't like. They want to be called Prabhu. <laughs> it's okay. Actually, they are uh, treated equally. No? Like we are given all the services here. Like if you want to uh, facilitate, Prabhuji also are given and Mataji is also are given. So okay. If you want to also, they are given uh, the same way too. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Do we have any more hands up? Yeah, Vinay Dhammadardas. Uh, who? Vinay Dhammadardas. Vinay Dhammadardas. You had a comment, Prabhu, so, still? Sorry, Maharaji. Uh, sorry, Maharaji, I, I forgot to lower down my hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought that. Mahavir Rup Das. Mahavir Rup Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, actually, my uh, group was representing the Brahmana group. So, uh, very interesting uh, finding came out during the group discussion. So, uh, the devotees, they mentioned that in Iskon, uh, we are creating a culture of goodness. In fact, uh, uh, culture of Iskon is Brahminical culture. And uh, we have a proper uh, method of initiation in Iskon, which is basically first initiation followed by second initiation. And it is uh, basically depending on following the proper guidelines. And uh, there are examinations and people have to uh, give certain, uh, they have to finish certain courses and then only they can get qualified. So it is not that uh, by the duration of your service or duration of uh, the time, so until and unless one attains the Brahminical qualities, he may not get the required initiation. So proper guidelines are followed, a Brahminical standard is followed and in fact, Vaishnavas are on a higher spiritual platform than Brahmin. So, in fact, it is uh, since Vaishnavas or the pure devotees of the Lord, they are on a higher platform. Actually, it is on the way of progress of the spiritual uh, spirituality development. And Iskon has Brahmins not by name, but by Achar and Prachar. By their, uh, by their attitude, by their service, they are basically demonstrating to the people that Brahmins, what Brahmins are, what they do and how they think. And in Iskon, there is a very systematic scientific training program, very, very strong training program for following uh, the four regulative principles, attending Mangala Arti, chanting, and depending on the progress in Brahminical culture, Iskon basically has different levels of bhakti classes. Multiple classes are there, multiple courses are there. Uh, they are basically having uh, DT Darshan, DT Seva, and so many services associated with DT worship. So only the Brahmins, like after the second initiation, the Brahmins get an opportunity to serve the Lord directly. So hearing about the devotees and, uh, and the Lord, so all this is basically inculcating the Brahminical culture. 
So this is what the point which came out uh, from the discussion, which was representing the group was representing the protection of Brahmana. So you're quite satisfied in ISKCON's uh, efforts to preserve the position and to give protection to the Brahmanas? Yes, Maharaj, because uh, Vaishnavas are a platform where anybody can become a Vaishnava irrespective of caste, creed and any religion. And he can advance uh, in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord by following a systematic process. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice comments. All right, we'll just have one more comment on this topic from Raja Shekhar Prabhu. Okay, thank you. So women are given opportunity to perform service, they're not restricted. All right, very good. Can we go ahead, Prabhu? Yes. So I think we've discussed this sufficiently. We'll go ahead. Yes. Next slide. I'll just read the purport. The killing of the above mentioned innocent creatures is totally forbidden because even by insulting them one loses one's duration of life. To insult a chaste woman means to bring about disaster in the duration of life. A very interesting statement by Prabhupada. To insult a chaste woman means to bring about disaster in the duration of life. Would anyone like to comment on this? Do you have any realizations or any experience in, in this? We know uh, it was stated here in the text how because Draupadi had been insulted, so, so many kings had come there at Kurukshetra and they were going to die. They were going to lose their life because of the insults against Draupadi. So was this, a un this is not a unique situation, but any chaste woman who is insulted will reduce the duration of life for, that, for those people who are guilty of insulting her. Anyone has any realizations on this, any experiences on this? Jan Master May Prabhu, is your hand raised or is that from before? No, it's from before. Yes, it's from before. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, I think that the ladies won't have any problem with this statement. Certainly, we have to give proper respect to women, especially chaste ladies. Vir Gopal Prabhu, like to comment? <coughs> My pronouns are um, This comment for me is slightly, I cannot understand fully because uh, at least in Kali Yuga we see that uh, women or just humans, forget humans, animals uh, are disrespected. So, uh, and these, there are institutions, so-called, uh, that are geared simply for the exploitation of women. So, and, and these people, they, they live, I suppose, quite long lives. Uh, and the good people appear to be losing their lives very quickly. So, um, I'm a bit sort of unclear as to the deeper meaning of this, having shortened lives. Well, yeah, uh, you're making a you're you're saying that you don't think it really happens like this, huh? You think uh, no, people that's not the, point. the people I'm who I don't understand. I don't quite understand the deeper meaning uh, in the statement. 
Well, the deeper meaning is that people are taking themselves into hell by yes. abusing and taking, uh, and, 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 uh, not giving proper respect to chaste ladies. Now, you, you, you didn't give much detail, but you said some people are ex they're, they're, uh, they're abusing women. Can you give some more details in which particular manner they're being abused? Well, one offhand is uh, child labor or, or women being exploited in the sex industry. Uh, there are many examples, but this is just one thing. But these are not chaste ladies. Right. Okay. Uh, fine. <laughs> uh, because in, in, our, in our Vedic times, we still had uh, women as prostitutes. Uh, and prostitutes... I mean, I'm just confused about this business about full chastity. Can, can a... Can a prostitute still be considered to be chaste? Is it just about the physicality of it, or is it about the consciousness of a person? <laughs> yeah. But we're going to come in, you know, I think I, I'd rather leave that till we come to the later section. There's a section dealing with prostitutes. When Krishna comes to Dwarka and the prostitutes come to meet him, I think we yes. can discuss it more at that time. Thank you. Murari, Murari Prabhu, has a comment? Uh, yes, Maharaj, I, I have a personal realization with this statement. Uh, it was like 10 years ago. We have, well, uh, uh, I'm, um, uh, I have a wife, and uh, one uh, Mataji, she, uh, she, she somehow other insult, insulted my my wife, and uh, uh, in in this way that uh, uh, the, there started to be some relation between her and me, and it was it was difficult situation. But my wife say something like uh, that should happens to her the same thing or something like this, and uh, after a few years then she married, and then her husband. Uh, go away from her and then in this way she she felt uh, like uh, uh, miseries uh, in, in their life and uh, it, it's it's somehow other I, I feel it's connected to, to this that uh, my wife is really just life and uh, and uh, that she she said something like this it's actually happened. All right. Okay, so you had some kind of experience, some realization there in dealings between women. Murli Manohar Prabhu. Thank you, Marjorie. I, I don't have, it's not, I don't have a personal experience as such, but I was just reflecting on the verse in the Bhagavatam which says, In the age of Kali, we, uh, we are short lived. So I was thinking this might be, this is one of the ingredients why people in general are short lived. This is one of the um, causes where, because people are, have no regard to chaste women. So therefore, that's one of the reasons why in the age of Kali people will not live very long. All right, thank you. Yes, certainly some truth there. That's one reason that because women are not given proper protection. So Kali Yuga, we don't live a long life. Also because of the cows, because of the abuse to the cows, who are also our mothers. So they're also, in the sense, they're also like chaste women and because we don't give proper protection and take proper care of them. So that's another reason why in Kali Yuga we have a short life. All right, uh, we'll just go ahead. Prabhu? Yeah. This complete outlook is based on factors leading to successful humanity. 
as against the civilization of polished cats and dogs. Right? So, successful humanity where people are given proper protection, women are given proper respect and protection, the cows are taken care of, the old men are looked after, they're given facilities for their spiritual progress, and the children also are properly educated and trained to become staunch devotees. Like that. Every, and the brahmanas also. Proper brahminical education, proper standards for brahmins. So that's different from the civilization of polished cats and dogs. People have nice big cars, they have money, but they're, they're just like animals in their behavior. We'll go ahead. Oh, would someone like to read this, please? Murli Manohar Prabhu, can you read this? Yes, Maharaj. The, the special significance of Srimad Bhagavatam that the activities of the Lord are central and not just supplementary historical facts. Srimad Bhagavatam is thus recommended by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the spotless Purana. Krishna and his pure devotees, like the Pandavas, are on the same plane. The devotees and the Lord are interlinked and they cannot be separated. Therefore, talks about them are all Krishna Gata or topics of the Lord. Shima Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 7, Text 12. Thank you, Prabhu. So Srila Prabhupada is pointing out the topics about the Pandavas are also Krishna Kata because they're not different from the Lord. Yeah, we'll go ahead, Prabhu. Next slide. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's the end of that lesson one, which we didn't finish. We'll go ahead. Yeah, please. We'll go to lesson two. You got it? Yeah, okay. It's not showing. Okay. Can we go to the beginning? Yeah, go ahead. Right? We're moving into chapter number 8. We already did a little bit from chapter 8. So here's the review first of all. The incidents leading up to the punishment of Ashwatthama. Who could describe for us? Rajashekar Prabhu, would you like to describe for us what happened? leading up to the punishment of Ashwatthama. What did Ashwatthama done? What, what was his crime? Because, uh, he, uh, uh, he just left the, the master who uh, killed the uh, uh, last uh, uh, dynasty of Pandava. Okay, he wanted to kill the, the and, remaining and, descendant. He wanted to kill the child in the womb of Uttara. And before that, what had he done? Before that, he, he killed the uh, uh, five sons of Pandavas. Yes, he killed the sons of Draupadi, the five sons, and then ran away. And then Arjuna had chased him and caught him, and brought him back for punishment. So we heard about that, yes. Next point, Prabhu. Well, we discussed the arguments for and against the execution of Ashwatthama. 
All of these arguments are all stated there in the text. We had several arguments, both for and against the execution of Ashwatthama. Right? We won't go through that again. And then we discussed Prabhupada's statement from 742 regarding the discriminatory power of women. We've, we've talked about this, that, that this can be genuine and it may not be genuine. When it's genuine, then it's good. But if it's wrongly based, then it's a problem. Go ahead. The, the relevance for Iskon of Prabhupada's statement that to insult a chaste woman means to bring about disaster in the duration of life, which is taken from chapter 8, verse number 5. All right? Uh, chaste women. Prabhupada certainly wanted to see women protected. Chastity is a very important quality also for women. And the training in ISKCON is meant to instill that chastity in women. And so we heard devotee women are different from general women. Okay, we'll go ahead. So looking at chapter 8 begins with Parikshit saved, right? Parikshit is still in the womb. He hasn't taken birth yet, but he has to be saved. Saved from another Brahmastra. We had Ashwatthama, he released the Brahmastra against Arjuna, but Arjuna counteracted that. But after the jewel was cut from his head, and Ashwatthama had gone away, he released another Brahmastra. And this time his Brahmastra was against the child in the womb of Uttara and against the Pandavas. So that's described in the first section of chapter 8. And then from verse 18 up to 43, we have the prayers offered by Queen Kunti. Wonderful prayers. We'll be looking at these in a minute. And then the end of the chapter, Yudhisthira approaches Krishna filled with lamentation. Why? Why lamentation? Yes, Sri Ram Prabhu, Sri Ram Nitai Prabhu. I have a doubt. I want to clarify my understanding. Ashwatthama had uh, raised the, has killed the five sons of Draupadi on his own, or was there somebody who has instigated him to kill the five sons? I'm sorry, your voice is not so clear. Ashwatthama, what, what's your... Was there, was there somebody who had asked uh, Ashwatthama to kill the five sons? To, to kill who? The five sons? We never heard anywhere that somebody had instilled this idea into the mind of Ashwatthama. We don't hear this from anyone. I've never heard anywhere that somebody had told him that he should do this. And we know that when he went to Duryodhan, his master, Duryodhan was not happy, he was very angry with him for doing such a thing. He didn't like it at all. So Duryodhan, Duryodhan certainly didn't approve of it. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. We still have some hands up here. Srivas, Srivas Pandit Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, you asked the question, why was Yudhishthira lamenting? Yudhishthira Maharaj was lamenting. Yes. Uh, because because he felt that uh, he was responsible for the death of all the millions of soldiers who were killed in the battlefield. Right. Because he wanted to, uh, the kingdom to rule, so he, the, the, the war was fought, so that's why he was lamenting. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, that's a correct answer. And what about who was trying to pacify him? Uh, everybody pacified along with Krishna. All the, all the uh, 
परीक्षित and because uttara is the wife of abhimanu abhimanu has already been killed in the battle and this child was the and the five sons of the pandavas they've been killed so there's no descendant there's only this one child to take up the to become the head of the yadu dynasty there's only this one child so ashwatthama wants to kill that child so he re releases the brahmastra and uttara she approaches krishna in great fear right the famous verse hmm? pahi pahi mahayogin deva deva jagatpate like that uttara is coming running to krishna that you're the only one who can save us uttara approaches krishna in fear for her the life of her child she said, i'm let this brahmastra kill me but don't let it harm my child so uttara had that mood so the brahmastra weapon actually burned the child but krishna covered the embryo from within and saves uttara krishna it says actually in the shrimad bhagavatam that the body the the body of the child was burned but krishna gave it a new body with the, the same soul the soul was there krishna just simply replaced that bur burned body with a new body so krishna uh, saved the life of the child and then ashwatthama's uh, brahmastra weapon was countered by krishna himself there was no time for the pandavas to do anything about it lord krishna himself counteracted it by his surashan chakra so lord krishna he's also within the womb he's with everywhere so he was also within the womb so he could protect that child and save the life of uttara All right we'll go ahead Okay so here's the verse Pahi pahi mahayogin deva deva jagatpate nanyam twad abayam pashye There is no one else who can save me from the clutches of death So this particular verse uh shows the the nice mood of uttara and how she's very faithful and chaste to krishna that she comes to krishna for protection it's the nature of all the devotees that when they're in danger they will always think and pray to the lord for protection they don't know anybody else they don't worship any demigod and they don't worry about any kind of rituals but they simply depend they simply take shelter of the supreme lord for protection we'll go ahead from prabhupad's purport the lord protects everyone but one who depends completely upon him is especially looked after by the lord the father is more attentive to the little son 
who is exclusively dependent on the Father. So the idea is, we should become like the little son. We should become completely dependent upon him. This is the mood of the pure devotees. Of course, not that we're all the time just simply depending on the, on the father. The father, the child also has to become grown up and stand on his own feet and take care for the father. So it's not just only the mood of taking service from the father. Devotee also well, doesn't, doesn't like to take service, they like to give service to the Lord. But in certain situations, there's nothing else to do but simply surrender and look to the Lord for shelter and protection. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Someone can read for us. Parikshit saved. O oh my Lord, you are all powerful. A fairy iron arrow is coming towards my, me first. My Lord, let it burn me personally, if you so desire. But please do not let it burn and abort my embryo. Please do me this favor, my Lord. All right. So Uttara is requesting a favor from the Lord. She understands the position of Lord Krishna. She's already seen Lord Krishna. She's been, she's observed the happenings from the battle of Kurukshetra. She's there and she's seen how Lord Krishna uh, was guiding Arjuna and protecting Arjuna, protecting the Pandavas through so many calamities. So she understands the identity of Lord Krishna. And although Krishna is standing before her, she understands also that Krishna is not only standing in front of her as a person, but he's, he's everywhere, he's in everything. And he's also there in the heart and he can also be in the womb, in her womb also and he can protect her child from this threatening, dangerous situation, the Brahmastra. All right, we'll go ahead. Yeah, Amaraji can read. So those, those of you who have families, who have children, certainly you'll be thinking also, you want to protect your, ch your child. And that is natural, to want to protect the child. So certainly Uttara was not ashamed to come and ask Lord Krishna like this. And she understands also the potency of Lord Krishna how he is the Supreme Lord. She's, all, she's described him, Deva Deva Jagat Pate. So <laughs> she's very clear about the position of Lord Krishna and she's asking Lord Krishna to show his mercy and protect her child. Yes? Go ahead Prabhu. All right, so coming into the prayers of Queen Kunti, we can, this is the verse just before Queen Kunti begins her prayers, this statement, yes, someone please read. Thus saved from the 
from the radiation of the Brahmastra, Kunti, the chaste devotee of the Lord, and her five sons and Draupadi addressed Lord Krishna as he star started for home. The chaste devotee of the Lord. Right? Chaste. We have been speaking about the cha chaste women and here we see chaste devotees of the Lord. So what is the particular significance of this chastity of the devotee? Maharaji, who read for us, can you tell us? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, the, the pure devotee of the Lord uh, will always uh, look for help um, only from the Lord, not from someone else. I think that was in the purpose. Right, yes. We only look to Krishna for help, for main. Right? The act of surrender, we remember from Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna is ordering Arjuna to surrender, six items of surrender are there, and one of them is that no one can protect us except Krishna. In the material world, People are, you know, they look for protection in other ways. They have their security guards, they have their dog, they have their insurance policies. And now, you know, with the COVID, we're having the inoculations, everyone's get to get injections. And in this way, we're thinking we will protect ourselves. But ultimately, the devotee's chastity is simply to surrender to the Lord. To take shelter of him. And because Lord Krishna is personally present there, so Drupadi, along with her sons, they're all chaste devotees of the Lord. And they're, they're coming to see Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna is going to leave. He's planning to go back to Dwarka. He has his own family, he has his own wives waiting for him in Dwarka. He's planning to go. Naturally, the Pandavas, Mother Draupadi, Kunti, they don't want Krishna to go. They want him to stay there. They're very, very attached to him. So they cannot bear the thought of him leaving them. So Draupadi and the Pandavas, and Queen Kunti, they've all come to see the Lord and to beg him to stay longer. And Queen Kunti, being the mother, she takes, she takes the lead and she's going to offer her prayers. Heartfelt prayers. All right. Go ahead, Prabhu. Oh, someone can read for us? Let's see, who hasn't read? Mahamati? Mahamani. Mahamani. Huh? Yeah. Prayers of Queen Kunti. A chaste chest devotee of the Lord does not look to others, namely any other living being or demigod, even for deliverance from danger. That was all along the characteristic of the whole family of the Pandavas. They knew nothing except Krishna, and therefore the Lord was al always ready to help them in all respects and in all circumstances. That is the transcendental nature of the Lord. He reciprocates the dependence of the devotee. So although the Pandavas were Kshatriyas, they had the royal order, but they had difficulties. They had many problems. But they never gave up their faith in Lord Krishna. They never thought, why is this happening? They, they accepted, they went on. So that is the chaste behavior of the devotee. Right? We'll, we'll go ahead. Oh, Sachi, Sachi Tanya? Is it, who is it? Sachi Tanay Das. Sachi you raised your hand. Yes, Maharaj, uh, one doubt was there regarding uh, Uttarasan, 
ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಚಾಕ್ಪೋಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಗೇವ್ ಅನದರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಸೊ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರು ಡೈನೆಸ್ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಸಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ well the point is lord krishna it's the same soul but just a new body yes it's the same soul the same soul the soul wasn't changed but the body had to be replaced but usually we say that descendant means the descendant from parents means father and mother Well, he's still in the womb. He hasn't come out of the womb. This this is not maybe known to everyone what actually happened. But this is how it's described in the Bhagavatam that Lord Krishna replaced the body. The same soul had already been placed had been brought into the womb. Well, by the conception of the father lord krishna just replaced that burned body with a new body anir anir puran prabhu you have your hand up yes just a quick query on uh, i'd like your comments on um, maybe in forgiveness before repentance um and reformation because we see in the case of ashvatam even though he was forgiven you know he still then went to attack rikshit maharaj so maybe just your comment around sort of forgiveness is earned and and maybe a comment on re- repentance and reformation So that's the one question and then the second question is around um, you know after Ashvatam attacked Parikshit you know what were the Pandavas reaction after that because initially they decided to forgive him but now he's gone and attacked Parikshit so the question is you know what were the Pandavas reaction after uh, Ashvatam did the second attack uh, the, the second attack on the unborn child um and i don't think the bhagavatam really gets into it so so i just like to hear your comment on that as well so those two queries please <laughs> no, uh, uh, uh. all right so uh as far as forgiveness and repentance we don't we don't certainly we don't see much repentance on the part of ashvatama i agree with you that the bhagavatam really doesn't get into it much because we don't take into account the fact that ashvatama was very upset you know that maybe the death of his own father that the trickery which was used to take the life of his father that created some bitterness within the mind of ashvatama yeah i came to the same conclusion yeah now i think that certainly must have been the impetus behind ashvatama's behavior that seeing how his own father was beheaded while he was sat in meditation because they tricked him telling him that ashvatama was dead so ashvatama took some revenge and tried to get of course that that in itself was wrong the the idea of you know they did this to me i'm going to get back to them tit for tat you know that that's not really the proper mood but this was the mood of ashvatama that he was outraged he wanted to get some justice back and he thought this would be the proper justice at the killing of the killing of all the yadus let me kill them all get rid of them so uh repentance is certainly and forgiveness <laughs> these things are we're, we're not really seeing these qualities 